RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents transcribed the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. At some time or other, every man has promised to buy his wife a fur coat. Some men never get around to doing it. But there are others, like Phil, who do get around to doing it, but wish they hadn't. More about that later. First, a word from RCA Victor. It's a wonderful feeling to know what you own is the best in its field. And in television, that's RCA Victor. Year after year, RCA Victor proves its superiority by bringing you the big advances in TV. And this year, RCA Victor is five ways finer. Every 1953 set, for example, brings you the new automatic magic monitor circuit system that screens out static automatically and automatically ties the best sound to the clearest picture. And every set has an improved deep image picture tube for lifelike pictures. You get all these big advances and many more with every RCA Victor 453. And for you who want the ultimate in television, there's the cream of the new RCA Victor line, Television Deluxe. These sets have extra tubes, extra power, extra beauty. These RCA Victor Deluxe sets are the most beautiful ever. No wonder the wide range of finishes include rich fruit woods and nut woods. The cabinets faithfully follow in the best traditions of modern, regency, and colonial styling. Yes, whichever style, model, or finish you prefer, you'll find your choice in RCA Victor's unusually wide selection. Prices start as low as $199.95. And remember, for expert installation and service, buy an RCA Victor factory service contract. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Fay and Bill Harris. <laughs> when Phil married Alice, he promised to buy her a real luxurious mink cape. He never quite got around to buying it, but now after 12 years of marriage, he finally saved up enough money to get it. Well, I finally got the money saved, $2,200. And it's gonna buy a nice mink cape from a little woman. I better count that money again, make sure I got 2,200 here. Now, let me see. 1,500, 16, 17, come in, 18, Nineteen. Hiya, Curly. I just came over to... Ooh. <laughs> Get a load of that federal wallpaper. Oh, <laughs> well, hi, Elliot. Curly, where'd you get all this money? I've been saving it up for a long time. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to buy a mink cape. Well, la di da <laughs> That'll look adorable with your new Mamie Bang hairdo. <laughs> Them ain't bangs. They're spit curls. <laughs> I'm taking a tango lesson tonight. <laughs> look, silly, the mink cape ain't for me. I'm buying it for Alice. Alice who? Alice, my wife. You're buying your own wife a $2,200 mink cape? <laughs> What she got on you, Curly? <laughs> she ain't got nothing on me. Then let's forget it. Let's you and me take the 2200 go out to the racetrack. Wait a minute. We ain't going to no racetrack. I want to buy this for Alice because she deserves it. Why? What'd she ever do for you? She's given me the best years of her life. Well, if she's already given them to you, why waste $2,200? <laughs> Never thought of it that way. <laughs> I'll just drop her a thank you note and then off we go to the race. <laughs> we can spend a fortnight at Santa Anita and for 20... No, now wait, no. Leave me alone. I'm buying the cape for Alice today. And look, it's going to be a big surprise, Elliot, so don't mention a word because she don't know nothing about it. Look, Curly, you can depend on me. If there's one thing I can do good, it's keep a secret. 
Why, do you know that five years ago my aunt and uncle were expecting a baby and my uncle came to me and he said, Elliot, your aunt's gonna have a baby, but she doesn't want anyone to know about it, so don't tell her I told you. And you kept the secret? You're darn right. <laughs> to this day, my aunt don't know about that baby. <laughs> Kids in kindergarten. All right. <laughs> so you see, you can trust. All right, me. I said. Don't go any further. Now, just don't let Alice know. Don't tell her what it's for, and I'll tell oh, you. Oh, Bill, can I? Uh, Bill, where did you get all that money you've got in your hand? Money? Uh, what money? Oh, oh well, I, I. Uh, oh, the money, it belongs to the government You see, it's, uh, it's for my income tax installment And I'm going right down to the income tax bureau and pay it now Whoo, I can't wait <laughs> Come on, Elliot, let's go down to the, uh, to, to the income tax bureau So long, honey, I'll see you later well, Goodbye, boys And be careful, Phil Put your money in your back pocket And make Elliot walk in front of you <laughs> <laughs> That's a nasty type remark Looks like your fame has spread, kid. <laughs> hey, huh? she didn't suspect the thing. <laughs> I got away with it pretty good, didn't I? Alice don't know nothing about the case. You know something? I'm going to get her the most beautiful fur in town. This is really going to be a big surprise. Yeah, but Curly, you don't know nothing about minks. Don't you think you ought to take a woman along, someone who knows about size, coloring, styling? She can model it for you, too. Yeah, it would help if... We had a woman along, somebody about Alice's size and coloring so we can see how it looks on her. And I know just the girl to take along. Who? Jane Russell. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot, Jane Russell don't look nothing like Alice. Why do you want to take her along? So in case you don't buy the cape, the day won't be a total loss. <laughs> Elliot, what we need is a blonde who looks like Alice Somebody like, uh, uh, Marilyn Monroe Yeah Wiggle walk would be good <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she'd be... No, no, we'd better not Hey, wait a minute What? I know just the one How about Larry Binion, the sax player in my band? <laughs> <laughs> He ain't blonde, he's bald. <laughs> I mean his wife, Betty, oh, his oh, wife. Oh, oh, oh. Now, his wife is blonde and she looks like Alice. Not only that, she's a friend of Alice's and knows what she likes. Look, on the way to the furriers, we'll stop by and pick Betty up. Come on, let's get in my car. Curly, I don't know if I want to go. Ah, oh, come on. Hey, I'll make it worth your while. You get in the car, and on the way down, I'll play some records. You got a record player in your car? Of course. What do you think? I live like a pig? <laughs> hey, Elliot. Huh? Hey, look. How do you like the cape Betty's modeling now? Look, Curly, we've been here for two hours looking at capes. Take it already, will you? Well, not so fast. I'm spending a lot of money, and I'm not going to throw it away. It took me a long time to raise this 2200 and I had to work hard to get it. I was in that crap game for eight hours before. <laughs> If I hadn't used your dice, I never would have made it. <laughs> Phil, I think this cape I'm modeling is beautiful. Why don't you take it? Well, I don't know, Betty. But, I... Phil, I have to get back and prepare Larry's dinner before he gets home. Your husband can wait for his dinner. Now, please, go try on another one. Oh, all right. Hey, Curly, you're going to give the cape to Alice as soon as you get home? Oh, uh-uh. I ain't going to give it to Alice until Saturday. See, I'm going to have Betty keep it at her place so Alice won't know anything about it, and then it'll be a big surprise when she... Uh-oh, I'm dead. What's the matter? Here comes our gossipy neighbor, Mrs. Stewart. If she sees me buying this cape for Alice, she's bound to tell her and spoil the whole surprise. Look, Elliot, we can't let her know I'm buying a cape for Alice. You're right, Curly. I'll see Well, the... well, if it isn't Mr. Harris, I didn't expect to find you here. Well, you I... You know when you're going to bump into people, I always say. You meet them in the strangest places. Hi, Stu. Oh. Mr. Harris, you've got the gremlin with you. <laughs> what are you doing in the fur department? Well, I... I know you're buying something for your wife. Well, now, I... don't tell me I know. I'll bet you're buying her a cheap rabbit fur piece. 
I ain't buying my wife a cheap rabbit fur piece. Am I, Elliot? No. He's buying his girlfriend an expensive mink cake. <laughs> Elliot! <laughs> you told me you don't want her to know you're buying it for Oh, Elliot. forget it. Look, Mrs. Stewart, pay no attention to him. I'm not buying anything for anybody. I was just uh, uh, passing through and, well, uh, I I'm browsing. Oh. Phil, look at this fur cape I have on. This is gorgeous. It's just what we're looking for. Buy this one. Nice browsing. <laughs> <laughs> look, Mrs. Stewart, I don't even know this girl. Then why did she call you Phil? Oh, well, uh, uh, oh, it was a mistaken identity. She thinks I'm Phil Spitalny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the all-girl orchestra. Look, Phil. All right, Evelyn, take your magic violin and get... <laughs> Phil, I have no time to play games. Buy the cape and drive me home. All right, all right. I'll buy this one if you like it. Look, you'll have to excuse me, Miss Stewart. I have to get Batty back to her apartment before her husband gets home. <laughs> and do me a favor, will you? Don't say anything to Alice. You see, my wife doesn't know anything about this. They never do. <laughs> Well, I better go pay the man for the cape. Miss Stewart, please, not a word to my wife. I don't want her to know about the cape. Bye. Don't worry. You can trust me. I won't say a word. I know how these things are. Oh, that nasty old man. <laughs> <laughs> what does a lovely young thing like that see in an old goat like him? <laughs> oh, poor Mrs. Harris. I hope she doesn't hear about this from anybody else. <laughs> well, I better hurry over to her house. Oh. I haven't had so much fun since I broke up the happy home of the Johnsons. <laughs> oh, and I just hated to tell you this, Mrs. Harris, but there he was in broad daylight, as big as life, buying a mink cape for this girl. Oh, you must be mistaken. Perhaps the woman he was buying the cape for was his mother. Mrs. Harris, you're fighting me. <laughs> was young and pretty. As a matter of fact, I can't really blame your husband. She was a luscious looking thing. She was? Yes. But don't worry, dear, she'll fade. Believe me, she'll never look like you when she's your age. <laughs> oh, now, just a minute, Mrs. Stewart. Oh, just these men, they're all the same. You can't trust a one of them. He's no different than anyone else. I don't believe a word of this, but I'll talk to Phil when he gets home and I, and, uh-oh, I see Phil's car pulling in the driveway now. I'll find out if he's been up to anything. Now, Mrs. Harris, don't get excited. Just control yourself and handle this diplomatically. Well, what, what should I say to him when he comes in? Don't say anything. Just start shooting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be by the back door. I can't stand the sight of blood. Goodbye. Enjoy your friend, dear. <laughs> I don't believe a word that old gossip says. My Phil wouldn't do anything like that. I'll ask him what happened. He'll tell me, and I'll believe him. Hey, uh, honey, I'm home. Where have you been? What did you do? And I've got a witness to prove you didn't. <laughs> didn't what? Phil, were you out buying a fur cape for another woman? Who, me? Buying a fur cape? You left out for another woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It is, huh? Then where have you been for the past four hours? Oh, the past four hours? A very exciting thing happened. I was standing in line at the Income Tax Bureau waiting to pay my tax when suddenly two masked bandits came in with machine guns, held up the place, and beat it with all the money. Naturally, I gave chase. I jumped into my Jaguar and pursued those desperados all over town. Finally, I caught them, disarmed them, and returned the money to the rightful owner, the United States Bureau of Internal Revenue. <laughs> you believe me, don't you? No, I don't. That's funny. I believe him. <laughs> and I was with him when he bought the fur cape for the other woman. Will you... <laughs> <laughs> then it's true. You did buy a fur cape for another woman. But Alice, now I don't, listen. I don't want to listen. I never want to talk to you again. But Alice, I, I didn't... <laughs> All right, Elliot. Do you realize... <laughs> Now, you see what you've done? You told Alice I bought a fur cape for another woman. What's wrong with Clever you? Clever of me, wasn't it? <laughs> now she doesn't suspect a thing about her surprise. All she suspects is that there's another woman. 
<laughs> Elliot? Yes, sir? Why did I ever have to meet you? <laughs> I could have just walked by that day, but not me. I had to look down and see you in the bottom of that wine barrel. <laughs> Curly, I didn't mean to put you in a spot I'll go in and explain the whole thing now Oh, no, you don't I'll go in and explain it myself It's going to spoil the surprise, but I got to do it I'll go in and pacify her Maybe you ought to wait, Curly She ain't in a good mood right now I'll put her in a good mood I'm going to sing to her That always cheers her up Good idea I could stand a little good cheer myself Then stay here and listen to me sing No, thanks I'll go to your bar and get mine <laughs> Popcorn, Cracker Jack, and Jelly Apple Won't you buy from me? Peanuts, Popcorn, Cracker Jack, and Jelly Apple Won't you buy, you buy, you buy, you buy Won't you buy from me? Peanuts, Popcorn, Cracker Jack, and Jelly Apple Won't you buy from me? Peanuts, Popcorn, Cracker Jack, and Jelly Apple Won't you buy, you buy, you buy, you buy Won't you buy from me? Won't you buy, pretty lady? Won't you try something new? Won't you buy, pretty lady? They're all imported from the tropics Just especially for you There's a little fella Always in the park Selling nuts and candy Happy as a lark Chirpy as a cricket as he strolls along Everybody loves him And his funny song Peanuts, popcorn, cracker, jack and jelly apple Won't you buy from me? Peanuts, popcorn, cracker, jack and jelly apple Won't you buy, you buy, you buy, you buy Won't you buy from me? Won't you buy, pretty lady? Won't you try something new? Tropics just especially for you. Peanuts, popcorn, cracker, jack, and jelly apple. Won't you buy from me? The peanuts, the popcorn, the cracker, jack, the jelly apple. Won't you buy, you buy, you buy, you buy. Won't you buy from me? Won't you try, pretty lady? Won't you try just one thing new? Won't you buy, my pretty lady? They're all imported from the tropics Just especially for you So won't you buy, you buy, you buy, buy, buy You buy, you buy, you buy, buy You buy, you buy, you buy, buy Hey, Alice Now come on, look at me, honey Cause I did that song just for you How'd you like it? I wasn't listening <laughs> And from now on I'm not gonna listen to anything you say or sing Oh, please, honey I can explain everything Oh, no, father I'm gonna pack my bags My children My money And leave you <laughs> But Alice I... Oh, no Not the money <laughs> Alice, let me tell you what happened I don't want to hear anymore Get away from me, you're nothing but a brothel Everybody home, I brought the groceries <laughs> Miss Faye Hughes is crying What has this Nashville not had dunked the amount? <laughs> the mongoose is here <laughs> Look, Judge, I'm going to tell you This is one time when I want you to keep out of this Now, keep out of it Alice, I want to talk to you Now, come here I'm not going to... Stay gonna... away from me Don't you ever dare touch me again But, Alice... You I'm... hide a man Take your cotton-picking hands off <laughs> Shame on you hitting this poor, defenseless woman Use as a kid, sir And I ain't going to stand for it Julia
Julius. Take that! Mm. Anna! Anna! Stop slapping me in the kisser with them wet soup creams. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so unhappy. You know what Mr. Harris did Don't to me? Don't cry, Miss Faye. Don't waste no tears on him. He ain't worthy of you. Will you stay? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't what? Whitey, Whitey! <laughs> I'm so wordy of yours. <laughs> now look, Alice, if you'll just listen to me, I'm, I'm not gonna listen to a thing you have to say. I'm gonna start packing and leave you. Alice, come back here. You no. can't leave me now. It's Thursday and it's the maid's day off. <laughs> Who's gonna make them beds? <laughs> Oh, Julius, why did you have to come over here and butt in hey, with... Hey, Curly, Alice just ran by me bawling like mad. You must have slugged her good this time. <laughs> I didn't slug her. Elliot, she wouldn't give me a chance to explain anything. Now what am I going to do? There's only one thing to do. Have Betty come over with the cape and let her explain it to Alice. Yeah. Betty could explain that the cape that Alice thought I bought for Betty wasn't for Betty. It was for Alice. Fellas, I came in a little late. What's the plot? <laughs> I bought Alice a mink cape as a surprise, and I took her friend, Betty Binion, along to help me pick it out. Somebody saw us and told Alice, and now she thinks I bought a cape for a strange woman. I like the bit. I heard it once on John's other wife, but they did it with negligence. <laughs> Will you be quiet? <laughs> Look, I ought to go over and get Betty in the cape now. But I don't want to leave Alice. She's liable to walk out, but Mr. I should... Mr. Harris, you stay here. I'll go get Betty in the cape. Would you? Hey, that'd be darn nice of you, kid. Don't mention it. I'm always glad to do something for you. I know where Betty lives. I'll be right back. If Miss Faye thinks he bought the cape for a strange woman, I ain't gonna disappoint her. So instead of getting the cape and Betty, I'll get the cape and a strange woman. And I know just the dame to get. Oh, Julius, I love you. She's adorable little rat <laughs> Well, Mr. Harris, my mission is completed. I did just like you told me. Good boy, Julius. I certain... Where's Betty and the cape? Well, I had a cute idea. The cape and the... Uh, the woman, they're in your hall closet. Well, what'd you put them in there for? Well, I thought if you'd get Miss Faith to open the closet door and she... I get it, I get it. Don't say another word. <laughs> hey, that's a wonderful idea. When Alice opens the closet door, not only will she get her explanation, but she'll get her surprise. Yeah. Ooh, what a bloody mess this is gonna be. <laughs> well, I'd better go in the closet and tell Betty what to say to Alice. You don't I... have to. I already to say. Now all you gotta do is get Miss Faith to open the closet door. You better get ready, Curly. Here comes Alice now. Well, Phil, it's all over. I'm leaving you. Oh, look, before you go, Alice, for old time's sake, wouldn't you like to step into the closet? <laughs> something in there I want you to see. Look, I'm not stepping in any closet. Well, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Then look, then, 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 you just stand there and I'll open the closet. Now, you close your eyes and when I count three, I'll open the door and you open your eyes. Are you ready? All right, I'll close my eyes. Good. One, two, three. Hello, handsome. Three, two, one, close your eyes. <laughs> Wrong closet, wrong house, everybody out, last stop. <laughs> All over, let's please stop. Pass the needle, let's stay on. Just a minute, Phil, come here. 
What was in that closet? I didn't see nothing. Did you see anything in there, fellas? <laughs> Just the usual things you find in a hall closet. <laughs> yeah, a raincoat, umbrella, a tennis racket, and a sexy dame in a mink cape. <laughs> small place for her to be playing tennis in. Julius, I'm going to break your basket-carrying arm. Well, I'm going to see what's in that closet. <coughs> Hello, Blondie. <laughs> Bill Harris, th there's a woman in this closet. A woman? Yes. What's a woman doing in the closet? Well, I don't know. When I put her in there, she was just a Narcissus bulb. <laughs> I didn't know they grew like this. <laughs> I gotta get a half a dozen of them bulbs. All right, all right, you can stop now, fellas. Miss, who are you? My name is Boo Boo Laverne. <laughs> I'm the girl Curly bought this cape for. I did not. Alice, that mink cape is for you. And who is Boo Boo for? <laughs> I don't know. If nobody claims her in 30 days, I'll take her. <laughs> <laughs> She'll look lovely in my window box Elliot <laughs> Alice, can't you see I'm being framed? I didn't buy that cape for this girl Lady, please tell my wife I didn't get this cape for you Your wife? I didn't know you were married Oh, Miss Harris, I'm sorry Julius asked me to put the cape on and get in the closet as a practical joke Here's the mink, it really belongs to you To me? Oh, Phil, I'm sorry. Oh, honey, this is beautiful. Thanks for buying it for me, darling. Oh, it was nothing. <laughs> nothing. I almost got killed. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. You get more of your favorite music for less money with RCA Victor's new 45 extended play pop album. The new 45 EPs bring you four selections on a record, up to eight minutes of music per side. And you save money on every record because you get these four full-length songs for only $1.40. And when you buy RCA Victor 45 extended play albums, you get music by the stars who make the hits. You'll find there's a wealth of wonderful dance tunes, for example, available on new 45 EP albums. Selections like Dancing in the Dark by Ralph Flanagan and his orchestra and Got You on My Mind by Buddy Morrow. Listen to your favorite dance music at your RCA Victor record dealers tomorrow. And always buy RCA Victor 45 extended play albums. You'll get more of your favorite music for less money. <laughs> This is Phil again. This is Girl Scout birthday time. And for 41 years, the Girl Scouts have been an ever-growing force for freedom. We send birthday wishes to the Girl Scouts everywhere, and a special wish that they may continue to grow in health, in happiness, and in good citizenship. Thank you all, and good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Included in this program transcribed were Lois Corbett, Gloria Bondell, and Julie Bennett. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Why are you packing, Alice? The cops after Phil? Of course not. We're going to visit friends. Uh, let's see. I packed everything but my radio. You're going to pack a radio in that little overnight bag? Certainly. This RCA Victor personal table radio. It's less than six inches high. Well, yeah, but how does it sound? Wonderful, Elliot. I don't know how they do it. I'd swear the sound was coming from a much bigger set. Must be the Golden Throat Tone System. Sounds terrific. Me for my RCA Victor dealers tomorrow. Next, hear Theater Guild on the air over NBC. NBC.